here's setup number two and super super simple i basically took some sawdust from a sander going for the more handmade crafted whiskey vibe um i have this pallet wood wall in my side shed that i just quickly um you know hammered up some pallet wood you can see it's not really like a finished side shed and then i have plans to to do some more stuff to it but and then also have this one over here which is cement board i had left over from a project and this pallet i think was left over from something and then this is extra oak wood flooring and i completely understand not everyone just has this stuff lying around but um you could easily find a few pallets and uh make a table structure just like this but with pallet wood and if you wanted it to be cleaner you could sand one side whatever so you definitely can you know makeshift make something like that um, and then actually it's covered on the top because uh, i built this shelving unit but uh, the nice thing is there is some light that bounces off of off of that and off of this wall so this setup is actually kind of nice because i have some like natural built reflectors same camera setup as before um i am shooting at 45 millimeters this time i zoomed out just a little bit because i had to get my camera closer um but you can see and same style I'm, I'm moving the light source around and playing with different um moods and exposing different elements and i can just show you so i, I always do like an establishing shot just general light kind of to get the vibe that i'm going for i like this one and this is probably um something i would like start with and then exposing the back um, i think this shot does a good job too at showing that so just trying to get the bottle lit up in there and, and get some um, cool tones i like that one a lot and that's actually probably more what i would go with um and i even really like this shadow so i might play with something like that and again this is like i have a general idea of what i'm looking for but I can really fine tune it in post-production. Uh, this one I liked for the shadows that are actually created on here that actually looks more like dirt than sawdust. Um, and it was coming out of a sander, so it's fine, uh, super finely ground sawdust. And then this one exposes that label just like beautifully. I like that little highlight that, that you get right there, which is nice. And then again, um, exposing the bottle this is my establishing shot I showed you earlier, another one exposing the bottle, and then I can also bring some of these highlights in on some of those elements um, for this, this shot, and then also this is exposed right here, uh, similarly to how all this is exposed, so I can get just a general um, exposure, and then this one uh, just having a little bit more of a dramatic light, and that's the old, old ones, so yeah. So with all these photos, I can go into Photoshop. And like I said, like this one is in a decent spot to where I can take that and really start to work with that. But I might want to enhance it a little bit with, um, you know, adding some interest in the bottle, lightening that up, uh, keeping, keeping the medallion uh, exposed. And then I would, um, I'm not really getting any of the highlights that I would want to see there. So I might take something like this image and bring in that nice, beautiful, showing off the, the detail in the label itself. Um, yeah, so it gives me some, some room to kind of play and actually create something that I am really going for. So I personally love this um, method of shooting. It just gives me a little bit more flexibility and control over the outcome of my photos. It's hard, it's very, very difficult to do this handheld. So if you want to shoot like this and you can eat, excuse me, um, there's other ways of shooting like this. So <clears throat> um, more common practices would be HDR photography. So hyperdynamic range, usually used in landscapes or architectural where you expose different parts of the photo. Um, so if you have trees hanging over a building you would expose the shadows and then um, expose the highlights and expose the mid-tones and then combine those three photos in post-production. It's a very common practice in landscape and architectural photography. 
Uh, and you can also, I mean, it's kind of like in replace of using filters, like gradiated filters or whatnot for landscape. Um, and then another process that is similar in concept is called photo stacking, where if you are doing macro photography, where the photo, um, the depth of field is like the thickness of like a quarter, <laughs> um, you can, and you want the whole thing to be in focus, you basically take multiple exposures where the and shift the focus at each time, and then you combine all those so that the image is tack sharp in post-production. So this idea isn't, um, a lot of people might say like, oh, that's kind of cheating. You're not getting the shot in camera. Um, but this technique or these, this idea is used in, in many, many techniques or in many, many different ways um, across photography and pretty much anything you see in a magazine or super high-end uh, product shots have, there's, there's, it's not just one shot, um, one and done typically usually there's things added elements added you might have to expose something um capturing something just like splashing into a cup just right um you might put that splash in there and you know there's there's always stuff done in that and that kind of thing so it's just a different way of creating uh using your media to or your um your tools available to create uh, something you're proud of so i i personally don't think of this as like cheating um but i would love to know your opinion and you, I don't usually do this technique for like my outdoor shots. That's usually done in one, uh, one photo, but the concept remains the same. You could easily uh, set something up and expose for different things and add some flash and, and, and combine photos in post-production. Um, and all my combining, so right now I'm editing in Lightroom, all my combining of the photos, so I'll get all these where I like them uh, for the elements that I'm looking for. And then I combine everything in Photoshop. So um, let me know, let me know what you think of that process. And again, I will do an actual like, here's how I combine the images in Photoshop um, video next, but I wanted to do a behind the scenes of me actually shooting. So yeah, hope you enjoyed.